What's up guys and welcome to Tan Tennis channel and today I'm doing a review on the new 2023 Yonex Recall 100 which will be released in January 2023 I believe. On this new version, Yonex increased the beam width a little bit from the 2021 version to gain more power and increased the string bed area between 10 and 2 o'clock to increase the sweet spot and help with the power when you hit more tool at the tip of the racket. Um, actually, I want to compare it with the previous version, 2021, but I don't have one with me. So I will compare it with the 2022 Yonex E-Zone 100 instead. Should see some differences uh, from the playtest. But before we go to the court, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. It will help a lot to keep the content going. Thanks. Okay, let's start from the baseline. I feel like I have a lot of consistent on my ground strokes, both on my forehand and backhand. The racket gives me very easy power and access to spin probably a bit too much. It's like I don't even have to try, just half backswing can get enough power and spin that is needed. Compared to the new V Core 95 that I reviewed earlier, that one needs a lot of work, good timing on the ball, body weight transfer, and leg drive. But on this one, I can just stand and swing out all day long. And I love my backhand a lot. I can find pops everywhere and this is probably one of the most forgiving racket in the market right now. I just cannot shank the ball. Even when I hit outside of the sweet spot, I still get probably 80% of the power and spin I got from the sweet spot. On the field, the frame is solid but muted. Pocket the ball pretty well and swing through the ball softly. It's like hitting a soft practice ball but I'm actually hitting with the new balls. However, I'm not a fan of this muted feel because I don't know where the ball is going. Sometimes it feels like the ball is going long but it dips and lands in the court. But sometimes it just flies out. I don't feel very connected to the shots with this frame. The launch angle is so high that I get good margin above the net. Spin potential is above average. Probably a bit less than Pure Arrow Rafa and Head Extreme Tour or even the E-Zone 2022. The problem is when I strike the ball early with a contact point far in front of my body, as I normally did on the blade or other control frames, the ball goes too high and lands outside of the court. So I have to hit a bit later than usual to keep the ball low. And I don't like that. You know, forgiveness is good, but too much of that would build a habit of hitting late and bad timing. And you cannot improve your swing and skill that much with this type of racket because it doesn't force you to do the right thing. But yeah, for beginners and intermediates, this racket could be really easy to play with because it's not demanding and it doesn't need full swing and accuracy and perfect timing on the ball. You can easily send the ball back by just hitting anywhere on the string bed and with various type of swing. The surf is good on the power and spin aspects, but I don't get the good ball placement. I just keep on serving to the middle of the box, even when I try to aim wide or on the tee. I like my surf on the Eastern 100 more because I can get some ball placement like I did on 98 square inches control frames. The return feels solid and confident. One big drawback on this frame is probably the control. You know I'm all positive on many aspects when I practice rally, but on point plays, it's like a different book. This is probably because when practicing, I didn't run that much but rather stand and strike. But now that I run a lot and hit when running, I cannot control it, especially on my forehand. This play test is probably the one that I made uh, unforced errors the most. I keep sending balls long. When I try to construct a point, like moving the opponent left and right and going forward for the winner, I don't feel very confident as I'm worried that I will overhit. So I would say the racket lacks control as it is very powerful and control with spin is also not enough for this overwhelming power. 
probably need some more time to adjust myself with this level of power, especially coming from control frames. It's like I overhit almost every shot that I want to attack. The touch plays like drop shots and lobs are also hard to tell. On the volley, it's surprisingly good. The racket face is stable and solid. I thought it would spray the ball everywhere but it didn't. It lands in the court most of the time. The racket is also very maneuverable so I could move freely with the racket. Compared to the Eason 100, I would say the main differences are the feel, the launch angle, and the control. The racket both give a lot of power in the sweet spot, but the recoil is more forgiving. So when you hit off center, you can notice that the power drops a lot more on the Eason and it's harsh on the arm. I think I can swing a bit faster with the Eason and get more bite and spin, but the launch angle is lower. It's like when playing with the Eason, I need to focus on getting the ball up, but with the V-Core, um, it's the opposite. I need to keep the ball down. The feel on the Eason is definitely stiffer, even though the flex rating on the paper is not so different from each other. Um, the Eason has more direct and responsive feel. It kind of tells me when I don't hit the sweet spot. I think I can control the ball better with the E-Zone, especially when running and hitting and on attacking approach shots. I feel more confident with the E-Zone. So overall, the vehicle is way more forgiving and comfortable, but I trust the E-Zone more when playing points. So who's the new vehicle 100 is for? I would say for beginner and intermediate players for sure, and probably for coach who's looking for easy racket to use when coaching. Actually, I cannot wait to play test the Recall 98, as I think it should be more compatible to my game. So stay tuned, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on the next content. Thanks!